Hey there fellow Night Owls, this is Anna Richardson, artist and founder of Minute Designs. I just want to welcome you to this video, and it's your first time being here, and if you enjoy this content, please make sure to hit the like button. I'm really happy to give my thoughts on this movie, especially when I was so worried they were going to mess this up. So if you're into this sort of content, please make sure to like this and comment below. I have a lot I want to get into, so let's get into it. I've been keeping up with every Disney movie animation announcement pretty much all my life. But with Soul, I was especially interested because, well, unless you're new to social media, you'd know why Soul was already getting some bad buzz. But basically, for the black community, we lived through seeing our first princess be turned into a frog about 30 minutes into our own film, and saw Will Smith voice a supposedly talented black secret agent only get turned into a pigeon because it's funny. <sighs> It just feels like it takes away something from the black audience when you change a black lead into an animal. It doesn't take much to see how few and far between it is to find a black lead from high-end animation studios that actually have authentic black characters on the screen. And not just as a spiritual negro or the token sidekick to show how inclusive the white lead is by having a black friend. Cartoons like Craig of the Creek and the OG Static Shock do a wonderful job of showing the black main character that connects with their African-American identity while living their lives as everyday people. And that's great and all, and I'm glad we have them. But even those shows also seemed as if they need to give them, well, a white best friend. I'll talk more on that in another episode, but I don't mean it as a bad thing. It's just there are specific tropes that are constantly recycled when you have black lead characters and yeah, it's exhausting to see, which is why I work so hard to change this narrative. Anyways, back to the topic on hand. Soul has been our, on our radar for these exact reasons. And as we waited with bated breath, I wasn't the only one who was wondering, why would they put your story where the black character dies right in the beginning of their movie? Dies? Wait, 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 he fucking dies? Like, it's like they heard how we didn't like being turned into animals and then they said, oh, let's kill them and make a movie about their corporal soul. <clears throat> Sorry, I just... I was really worked up over what I felt like was blatant disregard to how we, we feel about wanting black leads to stay black. And yes, I remember Into the Spider-Verse. It was perfect. But with Soul, with that first trailer, I mean, yeah, it was hard not to judge it based on that alone. Trailers about first impressions. But then when it came out after Christmas, I watched it. First thing first, Soul follows a middle school music teacher named Joe Gardner who seeks to reunite his soul and his body after they are accidentally separated, just before his big break as a jazz musician. Soul is the first Pixar film to feature an African-American protagonist, so this is a big deal. Joe teaches in New York City and dreams of a career in jazz, even though his mother Lubba objects it, fearing for his financial security. One day, Joe learns of an opening in the band of jazz legend Dorothea Williams and auditions for it. Impressed with Joe's piano playing, Dorothea offers him a chance to perform later that night. As Joe happily heads out to prepare for the show, he falls down a manhole. Joe finds himself as a soul heading into the great beyond. Unwilling to die before his big break, he tries to escape but ends up in the great before, where soul counselors all named Jerry prepare unborn souls for life. Each soul has a badge which, once filled with uh, traits, grants passage to Earth. Mistaken for an instructor, Joe is assigned to Train 22, a cynical soul who has remained in the great before for a millennia and sees no point in living on Earth. She needs to find her spark to complete her badge and agrees to give to Joe so that he can return home and, you know, do his thing. Joe tries to assist 22 in finding passion, but the attempts prove futile. Um, with no real options, they head for the zone, an area people enter when their passions set them into a euphoric trance. It also houses lost, lost souls who become obsessed and broken. Here they meet Moonwind, the captain of a psychedelic galleon bearing a troop of mystics without borders oh, who help re rescue lost souls. The mystics agree to help Joe, who has been in a coma since his fall. For the sake of not spoiling too much, I'll stop there. But Joe and 22 work together to get Joe back into his body and let 22 live her own life in peace. <laughs> Of course, it's never that easy, but what I really loved about this movie is that even though Joe isn't in his body, he stays on the screen. There's a lot of scenes actually that show him his black body, 
and the diverse melting pot that is New York City. Oh my God, so many beautiful black 3D animated characters and Latinx and Asian and it's just gorgeous. The principal was a shockingly lovely surprise. I loved it and like, there's the America I know. I know that sounds silly, but really it was refreshing to see the meticulous detail of black and brown animated bodies on screen, down to the hair follicles and the clothes. I'm just, I'm used to seeing those every day and it was great because I love that my kids get to see towns and classrooms and yes, barbershops with people who look like us there, just living their CGI lives. <laughs> I could go on and on, but I want to talk deeper about the theme of this film. Upon reading a few articles, I discovered that the body swap genre in movies is actually pretty well covered, but there's a sinister tone of racism when it involves black bodies being possessed by white souls to learn some deeper life lesson that they missed being all privileged. Even though 22 wasn't ever meant to be a specific race, and she cracks a joke about choosing the most annoying voice, her actress is Tina Fey, it's still hard for me to overlook this once I read some of those talking points. So I pass this information with a warning to you that, uh, of that. And if you want to know more about how they're used in other movies, uh, check out my description. I'll post those articles in the link. From here, I'll just talk about my first initial feelings and thoughts after watching the movie, which I still believe holds up to a degree. This movie honestly seems like a love letter to millennials. No, I mean that. My takeaway from watching Joe try to prove his life is worth living despite the perceived failures he's gone through and his mother's warnings is that as a creative, as a human with aspirations, we can't let ourselves get caught up in pursuing the aha moment, that feeling that will make every hardship finally worth it. It's good to be goal-oriented and to stick to your dreams no matter how it feels like, no matter how it feels like others around you say you won't make it. But there was a moment in the movie where it talked about the zone and the lost souls that even though they're still alive, end up getting lost there. The zone was pretty profound to me because it used a hedge fund manager as an example of someone who let their drive and fear of failure control their life. And it was as if he wasn't living anymore. He was so tuned into his job that he became this wandering beast and yeah, that can be us. We as creatives have to remember how to stop and breathe and just be in the present. I knew someone who tried to convince me to sacrifice time with my children in order to work on a future for them where they'd finally get everything they ever wanted. But your loved ones just want to see you happy, to spend time with you. That mindset is toxic, that, that can't be how we're meant to live to just focus on this perceived future and just forego the present. I refuse to do that because we as humans weren't meant for that, for that. You lose a part of yourself when you live only in the zone. If you live for the, only the aha moment and only see that, you miss the important things in life. Shoot, Adam Sandler's movie's Click also brought up the same issue. That moment doesn't really exist and that's okay. Because your life, if you live each day and cherish them, the good and the bad, are made of a bunch of aha moments. When you pick that pencil back up after someone told you your art will never get anywhere. When you keep playing after you felt like you weren't making any progress. When you get back into a game after losing. When you get back into crafting, singing, sewing, building, anything. Even if it doesn't make you money. Those aha moments are important. And enjoying a good book on a lovely sunny day, playing with your kids, or going for a walk with friends and loved ones, or smiling and watching a really good and hilariously bad movie. Those moments are just as important as your passions, your drive. Those moments deserve to be a part of your life and remembered. Heck, even the sad ones. It hurts a lot because in that time, you cared a lot. And that's not always a bad thing. It says something about you as a person to care so deeply like that, to live so contently, to try to. Those moments also define you. And you are multifaceted and not any one of those things, but all of them. So enjoy every moment of living while pursuing your dreams because you deserve to. I personally really like that. It meant a lot to me as an artist, as a wife, as a mother, that Pixar dedicated such a profound story with the black lead to us to the creatives who sometimes get caught up with chasing a dream or a career or a lifestyle, but deserve to be defined by so much more than just that. It was beautiful, and I love Soul for it. This isn't the first time Pixar's incorporated such a heavy theme into a children's movie, 
But I can definitely say Soul made me cry in such a reaffirming way like no others have. I won't say how it ends, but it was deep and beautiful. And honestly, I'm really happy that this was the film Pixar decided to have the black lead. Joe is very much like one of us. Being a black artist is hard. I've seen how hard it is to get a foot in the door and be recognized in art groups as a black comic artist and have experiences of being the joke uh, to family members, you know, wondering when I'll get a real job or lamenting over the years of my life that passed without ever really finding that aha successful moment that proved my hard work and dedication are meaningful. I was, and sometimes still am, scared that I'll be a graying old lady still waiting to see my dream of creating an animation studio or a serialized comic on TV or in the comic book stores come to fruition. But we can't let that fear control us. We have to have faith. Faith that we're on our true north and enjoying the path along the way. Life is meant to be lived, not feared or spent blindly chasing an idea or a dream. Now, for the not so love letter parts. At first, I was gonna give Soul an honest five out of five, but since I did come across those articles, like I said in the description below, that are there some blaring Hollywood tropes Mm, I kind of realized Soul falls into them. And so, I give Soul a 4 out of 5. I love each character, and I love the pace of the story. And even the Jerry's and Terry. And the not-so-hidden message to us millennials. They're old and true target audience. To keep with the good work, and to not let the mess of the world that we're born into beat us down and get lost in fear. That we're doing a good job. Goodness, heartfelt reaction and feedback on Disney Pixar's Soul. It was a wonderful movie, and I recommend it to anyone, not just creatives who want a feel-good family movie that's beautifully animated. If you enjoyed this video, please do give a like. How did you like so? Would you watch it if you haven't already? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're new to this channel, please be sure to subscribe so you can be alerted to new videos as soon as they drop. Y'all magic!